Hey, 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 Oh, it's fat right there. Yeah. It's gonna fit down there like that. I think. There we go. Set. Thank, Thank you, you. No sweet peach. Have a good ride. Councillors 
fought to try to try to make sure that that EA would continue. But the but but what we found is that the administration and the mayor's administration cares more about about taglines and and fictional election promises than about than about actual facts because they've also decided to take out pieces of cycling infrastructure across our city, not only in the downtown, but also in the suburbs. And that's a shame, because brothers and sisters, our friends that live out in Etobicoke, Scarborough, and North York aren't going to have the good, safe cycling infrastructure that, that we have a little bit of downtown, and that we're trying to grow and expand downtown. And despite the fact that the, the lanes on Jarvis, on Birchmount, and on Pharmacy weren't slowing down traffic. They removed them, or they're about to remove the one on Jarvis. And my friends, that's a shame. But I'm going to go back to a piece of good news. And that's because with groups like this, and organizations like this, and Cycling Toronto, and, and the, the community that has been forming around the removal of lanes, and forming around, yes, the addition of some separated lanes in this city, we hope, the community that's forming around that is gaining a stronger voice. And that means we can have a greater say in decision making at City Hall. And that's really exciting. And we need to continue that and have that to grow. Not only downtown, so talking to your friends, but talk to your colleagues at work that live in Etobicoke, in North York, in Scarborough, in Malvern, in Rexdale. Talk to them and get them joining on the movement. Get them contacting their councillors. Get them organizing to elect city councillors that respect the safety and the health of cyclists rather than just the movement of cars on our road. And friends, together we can build a city council, council that will have more respect for cyclists and we can get more good cycling infrastructure in our city. Thank you. Yeah! Woo! In 2013, from Spadina to Dundas Street West, all of those councillors are on this orange leaflet. And we, we uh, tell you how to drop them an email, so please drop them all an email. You can CC them and tell them you want them to put bike lanes on that portion of Bloor that is part of their riding, including Mike. So remind Mike he can put bike lanes on that portion that includes Blur Street within his riding. <laughs> that's, a, that's a council decision. I'm not allowed to make it myself. Okay. On arterials we are, Okay. not on Bloor. Okay, great. He said right. it's a council decision, so contact all your councillors. But the good news is, is that although the city council has killed the Bloor Street environmental assessment, we do not need an environmental assessment to put bike lanes on Bloor. We do need council to approve that though, and that requires every one of us here to commit, please, when you leave here today, to drop an email, and if it's your counselor that is one of these five counselors, Baileo, Van, Leighton, Perks, and Doucette, please make special note to have a relationship with them and tell them next year you want when that portion of Bloor is being repaid that you want bike lanes on that, and then they will pressure the rest of council to do likewise. So. I'd like to close off with a, a poem by my friend Bicycle Bob, who is a real visionary for the bicycle movement living in Montreal. And he said, cars, cars everywhere, what a stink. Eliminating our feet, packed together street by street. We had nothing to like, then we rediscovered the bike. And the good news is that cities across North America are rediscovering the bike. And there's a new movement called the Green Street Movement. And at least 20 North U.S. cities are developing very uh, concerted bicycle lanes throughout their cities and have doubled, many of those U.S. cities have doubled their bicycle ridership. This is the decade for bike lanes in North America. We will be reaching for what the cities in Europe are doing. It's happening now with shrinking budgets and austerity measures. The best way for cities to reduce budgets and to accommodate for growing populations who are moving through the cities is to get people out of their cars and onto safe bike lanes. So now's the time to start lobbying and it starts with Bloor and Danforth. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Safety instructions and please take, take a moment to thank the police for being with us today when you see them. Okay.
Hi, folks. Do you hear me? Yeah. What? Just a couple of things. One is we're not racing today. This is going to be a nice, slow, sedate ride. We want everybody to see us all along the way. All right? And we've got families, we've got children, we've got a fair number of people here. So nice and slow. Try not, don't get out in front of uh, myself and, and Angela. We'll be at the very front. Don't pass us. Stay behind us. Um, also, leave a little bit of room on the left side near the center line so that the police can get back and forth as they need to. Leave a little bit of room around yourself so that if somebody stops suddenly or somebody has a spill, you don't crash into them. Right? So just try to be as safe as possible. And remember, we're working with the police. The police are here to help us along our way down to Queens Park. So let's have a good ride. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Vivian. Oh, yeah. On my right over there. I've got to jump out at Chris. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 So please move uh, towards me and we'll move on to the street, please. Thank you. 